That was your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also would like to thank everybody for coming this evening and for all of the uh, students and employers for participating in not only this evening, but the, the entire co-op program. So uh, thanks to all of you for that. And at this time, I would like to uh, introduce Mr. Shorkey, the superintendent. And uh, he's going to take over the MC stuff here for a few minutes. Uh, thanks, Greg. Actually, my thing says uh, introducing special guests, so that's why I'm going to take the opportunity to do special guests before they make speeches. I'm Tom Shorkey, the superintendent. Uh, glad to be here tonight. Uh, there's many programs that go on th in the spring that honor our students. This one is special because it's not only students and or parents, it's employers who have given these students a chance to do something outside the four walls of the high school. They say that encouragement is oxygen for the soul, and I think what you've done for our young people in this program is provide that encouragement to give them opportunities for real life experience in the workplace and help them to make better choices as they leave our two high schools and go on to, uh, to the rest of their life. At this time, I would like to bring Alan Horn up here. And before, you know, it's kind of like when the, they're nominating the president and the uh, president has his speech, but all the guys that talk before him talk so long. But I don't want Alan to start to talk until you know a little more about him. So step up here. Indian Woods Elementary? No, Thomas Edison. Fort Gratiot Middle School. Fort Huron Northern, four years. four years. Great point, steadily increasing each year, especially this last year. Yeah. Co-op job, McDonald's, junior year. Yep. Did well. Yeah. Learned about the restaurant business. I did. Thinks that maybe you want to go into the restaurant business someday. Mm -hmm. Ah, but what did he do this year? Didn't go back to McDonald's. ABC Warehouse? So now he's an electronic wizard also. <laughs> but it's a different kind of business experience for him. Now what's he going to do when he's done? He's going to go to SC4 next year. He's going to take business courses, hopefully transfer someplace like Walsh College, and go into a career in business. He thinks it's going to be in foods, but when he's done with ABC Warehouse, it may be hard to tell. But anyway, I think Alan is a fine example of what happens when we have students the give them the opportunity to take advantage of what you have to offer as employers. Did I say your whole speech for you yet? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> all right. Good evening, and on behalf of all the co-op students, I'd like to thank the employers for coming tonight and for everything they do for us throughout the year. I've been an employer in Northern's co-op program since 2005. And in that time, I've learned a lot about the workplace and its the workplace and its environment. The workplace's management, teamwork, and rules have made me more knowledgeable about businesses and their operations. Choosing to do co-op was the best decision I've made in high school. I started working at McDonald's four years ago, and with good work ethics, made my way up to be a crew chief. I joined the co-op program when I met Miss Petey, and had hopes of working more hours, making more money. Uh, I was seeing myself as a manager one day at McDonald's and wanted to work and learn as much as I could by doing and observing the ups and downs of business. I was responsible for not only my own work, but also the work of other employees. If they slacked off, made a mistake, or showed poor production on their shift, I had to find a way to motivate them to take pride in their work and work as a team. I wanted to learn as much as I could about the business world because this is what I have planned for my future. I took advantage of the co-op opportunity by expanding my resume to include a salesman at ABC Warehouse. Being responsible for a cash register balance and satisfying customers are about the only similarities between my past and present jobs. Quite a switch from fast food to salesman. Both positions have allowed me to work with all kinds of people, age differences, and management levels. This year I really got my head into business. I believe the co-op experience has helped me to narrow down my career decisions and has given me the opportunity to freely examine and prepare myself for the real world. 
have gained self-confidence, learned people skills, become self-motivated, and have matured by having the responsibility of balancing employment, high school, family, and friends. The co-op experience is one that I would highly recommend and feel fortunate that Poirier and Northern has offered me such a great program. Thank you. When Alan said the two common things of his two jobs were balancing the cash register and working with customers, I think that's what it's all about. If you can handle the money and handle the customers, you can be a success somewhere along the way. Um, and when you do become that success, involve some co-op students from your local high school. Next, uh, I have Tom Crosby. I'm going to give you some welcome from the Board of Education. I'd like to say a little bit about Tom when he comes up here also. Tom's been on the board for four years. Uh, Tom and his wife have five young children. That's what makes him our favorite board member because when all five are in school, we get $7,085 for each one of those five. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Tom. But anyway, Tom uh, uh, finished his term this year, didn't think he was going to run again, had second thoughts, and actually today's election day, and there might still be an hour left. <laughs> But uh, Tom is a write-in candidate. Uh, we have three very fine candidates for the board. Uh, Tom's been very good this last four years, and uh, How about the good it's all yours. On behalf of the Board of Education, I want to thank all the employers and all the students who participated. In fact, I'll be quite honest with you, I wish as a student I would have done the co-op. I think by now I would have been a brain surgeon probably instead of being an accountant. But I think it's a wonderful experience that you guys have done and no matter if you continue on to a college education or go right into a career, what great opportunity you have to take what you learn in class and to be able to apply it in the real world and understand what business is like. And I think it's a great, it's a, it's a great reflection on the students in the community when we work as a group. Looking at the slideshow, I saw all those different employers and all the different kids. And, and you want to know something? It's not just the employers and it's not just the kids. But you know what? They gained just as much as you did. They, en they probably enjoyed your uh, perspective, getting new ideas, fresh ideas. And I think that's what's the, what it's all about, is working as a community. And that's why I'm on the Board of Education, because I think it's important that the schools and the community work together. That's how we have a better future, and that's how we train young people to become uh, viable members of the community. And I'm very proud of everybody, both the employers and the students, for doing this. Thank you for having me tonight. It's my honor. Okay, at this time, I'd like Bob Beaton to come up to the microphone. I really do have a couple of things to say about Mr. Beaton. <laughs> right over here because I'm not I, sure. <laughs> I, I want no, I want EJ to be able to get you right on camera. Bob retired this year, February or March, 40 years in the Port Huron Area School District. And you. you know there are some programs and projects that people get their arms around and say that's my baby or maybe we're here today because of a person. Bob really is the person who's made this co-op program really work for so long in this school district. He, had, he wore so many hats, and this year, as most of you know, this is my first year in, in the district, and I would go to somebody and say, well, who's doing the health and safety? And go, well, well, Bob used to do that. And then I'd say, well, who's in charge of insurance? And they'd go, well, well that's Bob Eden. And then I'd say, well, man, we had an accident in one of the schools. Who does the accident report? Bob Eden does that. Bob Eaton was the secretary to the Board of Education, took all the notes, attended all the meetings, put all those things together. He had our, our health, safety, security, our homestead security liaison. He just done a, a number of things for a long time with a tremendous attendance record in our school district. And I, and I would be remiss if I didn't bring Bob to your attention tonight because this program is what it is because of the work of Bob Eaton. And uh, with that, Robert, Take over this microphone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, Mr. Shorkey. But I learned a long time ago that you're only as good as the team that works with you. And uh, we have outstanding teachers and coordinators and counselors and administrators and employers and, and uh, most of all, of course, the students. So 
give yourself a round of applause in your own mind and uh, be thankful for what we have because um, it, it is a wonderful program and I can attest to the fact that literally thousands of students are employed as a result of the program, they're productive citizens, and in a moment I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But I would like to say thank you for inviting me this evening. It's an honor and a privilege. I would like to say a special thank you to the coordinators uh, for all the work that they do. Um, in fact, would they please stand because they're very true and dear to my heart. Would the coordinators stand please and receive a round of applause. We're talking about taking the high road. It was good in 1943 when our program started and it's good today. It's good now. We have the second oldest program in the state of Michigan. We believe Battle Creek may be older. But at any rate, we feel that we have the highest standards around. Back in 1943 and until now, literally hundreds of thousands of decisions had to be made. And it would have been real easy to take the low road and let all kinds of people in to not follow the rules and the regulations and the standards and the funding procedures and things like that. And frankly, that was kind of tough on some of the coordinators as well as the administrators. But this was a special program that required that we follow that. And we honored that. The research continues to show that co-op students have a leg up on other students who don't have a co-op experience. For example, research has shown that their grades, attendance, attitude, and self-image improve. That's a lot. The graduation rate is very high. The co-op experience may help them make money at an earlier age, and yes, prepare for life after high school. And you know, there really is a life after high school. There's one of the many reasons that the Michigan Department of Education mandated that starting in the seventh grade, all students had to have an electronic educational development plan. And part of that was not only taking courses and getting scheduled, but it was also that students be required to investigate careers. In 1943, when the program was started, this may be of interest to you, coffee was 46 cents a pound. A stamp was three cents three cents to mail a letter. For those of you who have to pay for a date, a movie ticket was 35 cents. Now it costs you $35 to have a date just to go to the show. A new car, new car, get this one, $3,900. Now you can hardly buy a junker for $3,900. And gas, this one will grab you, was 15 cents a gallon. My, how things have changed. But while costs and changes have gone, we continue to take the high road. We're concerned about it in 43, we're concerned about it in 07. We sometimes wonder why bad things seem so easy to do. Have you thought about that? Oh yes, it's so easy to stay in bed. It's so easy to be late to class. It's so easy not to do your homework. It's so easy just not to go. It's so easy to be impolite or rude to someone. Uh, but that's not the right thing to do. We need to be taking the high road. A good attitude, honesty, and a willingness to learn will get you ahead much faster. However, you know, the bottom line of this is none of it really matters, no matter how good you are, no matter how much of an all-star you think you are, if you're not there to play, if you're not there to work. It simply doesn't matter. That's the bottom line. Getting experience is what co-op is really all about. It's the classroom and the laboratory outside the four walls of the traditional educational system. It's very much like the science lab or other labs that you might have, except that it's an extension of the school district into a business. Being successful means in many ways seeing what needs to be done without always being told. It is listening and contemplating, and frankly, not mouthing off or holding your tongue from time to time. And did you know that the letters in the word listen also make up the word silent? So there's a lesson in that for us as well. There's a time to be silent, and there's a time to listen. There's a time to speak up, and to do so in a proper manner, and become a positive leader as a result. 
when making decisions, be sure you have a fine command of the facts and no decision is perfect. But knowing that you made the decision based upon the best available information, rather than political ambition, is gratifying and will be respected. Knowledge and experience, intelligence, end up being wisdom. And I'm constantly reminded of how many co-op students have developed wisdom much earlier than some of their fellow students. And then sometimes things go wrong in business, in regular life, or whatever it is, but I still believe it's important to take the high road. Try not to be angry, to pout, or to spread gossip, but to forgive is the ultimate grace. If you don't forgive injustices, they will eat you up, and frankly, they will hold you back. You can forgive even though you don't forget. Some of us don't realize that, but that is an important thing. If it is a true injustice, life has a way with dealing with it. So let it pass with class and move on. During my time, there were people I probably should have fired, and frankly, others wanted me to fire them, but I thought I saw some good in them and fought to keep them. Nearly every one of them was successful with a little help, but there are always a couple that don't make it, and you frankly feel bad for those people, but even those people deserve a second chance. The true test for students, staff, and employers is determining what is right and what is wrong. Some years ago, under great pressure from many places, I developed a standard that has served me well over the years and I share it with you now. Simply step back and ask yourself, is this task, is this task immoral? Is this task unethical? Or is this task illegal? immoral, unethical, or illegal? If the answer to any one of the three is yes, then don't do it. And don't pass the buck by asking someone else to do it for you so that you don't get in trouble. Now the challenge before us is to keep the true co-op program alive with related classes, training before students go out on the job, related training while they're on the job, good coordination, and business supervision. Many obstacles have occurred recently to impinge upon the co-op program or impede upon the program. Some of that simply was the change in the school starting and ending times. Some of it is graduation requirements. Some of it is the economy. But in the end, it's all about faith, family, and friends. I challenge you to make the co-op program bigger and better for your brothers, your sisters, and fellow students. To leave a legacy so others may share your good fortune for we are all challenged to do all the good we can for all the people we can, all the time that we can. Thank you, and please take the high road. Thanks, Mr. Beaton. I now would like to uh, introduce Mr. Woleen again, and he is going to do the awarding of the certificates. Thank you, Mr. Delkey, and good evening. Just a couple of comments uh, about Bob. I've had the opportunity to work with Bob Beaton, Beaton for 34 years, and it certainly has been a, a pleasure. And he's a lot older than I am because if you realize that Co-op's been in existence for, what, 64 years, he started it. But uh, with that, uh, I'd like to say that uh, it's a pleasure to work with all these businesses. The partnership that, you know, the partnerships that we share over the years, it's truly amazing. And I too can attest to this because I also was in the co-op program uh, at Port Huron High. And I'm telling you, what you learn from the businesses is just amazing. So uh, let's keep up the good work. Um, I'd like to also at this time uh, congratulate the students. Uh, that's what we're here about. The most important thing we do day in and day out, it's the students. And to see all of our students here working together, it's just, uh, that's what it's all about. So uh, congratulations to each and every student here this evening. So I have the pleasure tonight to uh, have the employers stand up, because they have certificates, as well as the students. And this is the time we're going to exchange certificates. So at this time, would the employers stand up with their certificates and students, and at this time, Exchange your certificates.
At this time, I believe all the employers as well as the students have exchanged certificates. Let's all of us give each other a round, nice round of applause. With that, uh, again, congratulations to all the students, and I'm going to turn this back over to Mr. Delkey. Thank you, Mr. Willey. I now have the uh, distinct pleasure of introducing three young ladies that are sitting over here to my left. Barbara Wismer, Norma Jean Levitt, and Laura Wismer, and they are here this evening to present the Don Wismer Senior Memorial Co-op Award. Young ladies. I'm the baby of the family, Norma Jean Levitt, and I am here this evening to thank the Port Huron Area School District and the Board of Education for continuing to honor our father this way. My sister Laura, my Laura Wismer, my brother Don Wismer, who's unable to be here this evening, and myself are very gratified for this continued support in his name. Uh, he would be 101 years old this year, and he retired when he was 65. So that's pretty special that this continues, and I think Bob Beaton probably had a little bit to do with this too. We thank him especially. Especially. And my sister-in-law, Barbara Wismer, she was actually an employer and wants to share some thoughts with you tonight. I promise I won't embarrass too many people. But I want to thank you uh, for my husband, who is unable to come to this evening. But I'm in the, I am the daughter-in-law, and I always call Dad Wismer, Dad Wismer. So I had to be careful, because he was one of the directors at the time. But I was in your library. I am one of your media specialists from 1965 to 1980. And I had co-op students, and I could not do the job without co-op. Uh, they gave me the AV room. Can you imagine what it was like to have a movie projector, 16 millimeter, not working for your classroom? I had wonderful students who came in and worked with the teachers, showed them how to w use it, showed me. Um, and then computers came in. I had to relearn everything. But I had some wonderful co-op students who went on to become, um, one is working, Duncan McKenzie is now in Chicago with Pepsi-Cola, and he was a media center student, uh, AV and library, and he became a librarian and was doing research for Pepsi-Cola. Uh, you have uh, Jeff McCabe, who was one of my uh, co-op students again. Uh, and he is a media specialist at Port Huron High. Uh, we put them through their training. Uh, we also have Anita Jackson, who is now working for the St. Clair uh, County Library System, and she has the Birchville Library. But there are other people who have worked as aides over the years, and they were working in the media center. But then they took away my co-op, so I guess I had to retire. No, I got moved out. Um, I just got to be sure I've got all this. I want to. I was so tickled to see this in the paper this past week on Nick Jowett. Nick, I have two articles for you, and but I wanted to hand these to him personally. His father was one of my favorite students who would come in to the media center and please, Mrs. Wismer, will you show me where the embalming books are or the cremation books? And I've never forgotten it. So, Alan, you won't get away too far. Plus, I had Mr. Crosby down here. <laughs> I've had Dan DeGroe. Uh, we had quite a few students that have come through Northern, 
and we're very proud of them and I'm always I've seen I worked at Chippewa and I've gone to I was at Port Huron Central in 1980 between two schools so uh, I've gotten around and I see faces that I think I still recognize and they recognize me so um, anyway it's been fun and it's co-op I wanted to say about dad he was <laughs> He started out with nine members. I don't know if people realize this, and he ended up in 1972 with well over 300 members. I think that's the employers. And of it, over three, I think it was over 3,000 students went through. But Bob Bean was involved in that. Al Gable, Ed Tinsley, all these people were marvelous to work with for the co-op. And the co-op is so very, very important. I know sometimes you've got to get out and really work in business. What a wonderful way, and thank you very much. I was Alan Zhao, a second grade teacher at McKinley Elementary. Um, oh, do you want to say that, Laura? No, yeah, for Northern. No, um, do you want to do Northern? Yeah, this is Northern. Okay. I graduated from PH. I've got Northern. <laughs> now, my, Linda, do you want me to say anything? That they couldn't narrow it down to one? There's two? Okay. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. There they are. I didn't know that. This, do you want me to read it? The Don Wismer Senior Co-op Student of the Year Award presented to Alan Horn from Port Huron Northern, class of 2007. Okay. The other one, now I'll continue on. This one is to the lady presented to Lynette Morgan, uh, Port Huron Northern class of 2007. It goes on to say in the plaque, in memory of Don Wismer Sr., Mr. Co-op, his commitment to youth, people working, was his mission in life. That's true. The Port Huron High uh, Student Award is going to Brett Lynch. Congratulations, Brett. And the other one from Port, for Port Huron High is Nicholas Jowett. Wonderful thank you to all the students at 2007 graduating group. Thank you. In closing this evening, again, I, I would like to thank everybody that came out this evening. And again, for all of the efforts throughout the year, uh, I know it's a great benefit to uh, students. My own daughter did some co-op. and. Uh, she learned some lessons. In fact, she kept looking down the hall at one of her jobs and saying, I want to be in that office. And so she did go to school and, and she did uh, get a degree in, in human resource management. And she is in an office of human resource management. So it, it really worked for her, gave her a lot of confidence. And I, I thank the program for that. And with that, uh, before I tell you to leave and drive safely on your way home, I would also like to acknowledge Mr. Beeden. Thank you. And he did retire, so we put a clock on this. I did put the battery in it. I was going to wait and let him put it in so he could start whenever he wanted. But I thought, well, we'd, we'd do that. But it just basically says, Robert Beaton, in appreciation for your dedicated service to the co-op program, thanks from the Big Reds and the Huskies, 2007.
Thank you so much.